Hi guys and welcome to this second video in our Transforming Data series of videos for the Further Maths course. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will start in literally 30 seconds, but if you are new to this channel and new to these videos, do me a favor and subscribe by clicking that doohickey. Spread the word that I am here and covering all of the videos that you are gonna need for this course. And uh, well, why don't leave me a comment below partway through the video and let me know how we're doing and what it is I can do to make things better for you. Now, this is the second video based on the video we did previously, which was looking at the circle of transformations. What do you mean by circle of transformations? I hear you call. Well, there we go. Behind me is shown the circle of transformations taken from the Cambridge textbook. Thank you very much. And what we noticed was, as you said in our previous video, not all data is linear. And so we need to find ways of turning curves into straight lines. And that is where our circle of transformations come from. So the one we're gonna deal with at this moment in time in this particular video is the X squared transform. But what I need you to realize is the data applies very much to Y squared, or sorry, the, the, the principle very much applies to Y squared as well. So as you can see, there's an X squared and a Y squared there, a Y squared and an X squared there. So these transforms actually apply to three parts of my circular transformations. The one I'm gonna deal with at this moment in time is maybe this one here, because I've got an example coming up a little bit later on, um, uh, or maybe some data like this. So we're gonna do an X squared transform that's gonna look at data in that way and that way only. So, the interesting question is, lots of people always say to me, no one ever says to me, uh, Math Guru, uh, how does this even work? Funny you should ask that, but I'm about to explain it to you. So. Let's imagine that we have data that uh, does something like this. And so we've got a kiss and a kiss and a kiss and a kiss. And you can see it seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Very much fits my circle, that part of the circle there that tells me I can absolutely do an X squared transform. And so I need to be able to find a way of moving these data items out and linearize them. Now, very, very carefully or very importantly, if we remember here, this is my Y and this is my X. My Y values, my height of these things is not gonna change, it's just how wide. But you're gonna say, well, how does this work? Right, look at the value one and I'm gonna square it, what do I get? One, absolutely, what's two squared? Four, yep, three squared, nine, four squared, 16, and so we go on. Now this isn't a video on squaring numbers, but what we notice is, as these numbers get bigger incrementally, in small increments, what do we notice about these numbers? They seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger, exponentially, as it were. So the gap is wider and wider and wider. And that's very much the principle we use here. So if I go back to a clean section here, and let's draw those again in a nice, beautiful curve. What we're now saying is this, small x values, will have a small stretch away from the y-axis. So this value here may very much end there. There's my blue dot. This value here will go much further away, a bigger gap, not massively, but a bigger stretch away. This one here might go there. This one here might go all the way over here. This one here might go all the way over here. And what do you notice? They're stretching out. Now, if I was going to try and draw some sort of line of best fit between them, it looks to be a lot, lot straighter. Now again, these transforms are not perfect. We have to choose the right transform to give us the best line, okay? More on that in a different video. But squaring, very important. So that particular version there was called an X squared transform. Why is this gonna be important to me? Well, the biggest trick that people, or the biggest mistake that people make with these type of transforms is to get the equation of the linear regression wrong. Now, that was easy for me to say, blah. Basically, we are changing the values on an axis, and as such, we need to change our equation. Now remember, we would normally use y equals mx plus c for the equation of a straight line, but for linear regression we don't, we use y is equal to a plus bx. Perfect. Now, why are we using the values y and x? Well, because that's generally speaking what we would have labeled our axes. We always put y values here and x values here. Now, remember with linear regression, we did examples with temperature and age and height and all those type of things. So you are well versed in changing these letters from x and y into age, height, weight, whatever we needed to do. 
So the idea now of doing an x squared transform shouldn't be too alien to you because if you remember, we are stretching our x values out. We're squaring all of our values. So we cannot write x here anymore. We are going to write x squared. Or more importantly, we're going to plot using our CAS calculators y against x squared. So just checking here, we have y equals a plus bx, but I'm not doing an x transform. I'm not putting x, I'm putting x squared. So make sure that your formula does that. Here we go. Here's a real world example provided by Cambridge. Thank you very much, Cambridge. So we can see the data here is, ooh, yep, slightly different from mine. Is this example a square transformation? Absolutely a square transformation. Why? Because if we go back to our circle of transformations, we see that it is. Now, when we linearize this data, what do you notice the x value has changed to? It's changed from time to time squared. Yes, those values have been squared. It had my height change in any way, shape or form? Nope. And as I said before, my y values stay the same. And so what do we notice about my data? Whoa, that looks like a fairly impressively straight line. The important part now is to look at my equation. Because what do we notice? Well, we notice that my y values stays as height because my y values didn't change. 1560, that's my intercept, right? That's my value in this situation for zero time. Minus 4.90, that is my gradient. That will all come from my calculator. But the most important thing now is that says time squared. And we would need to use that formula for interpolation or extrapolation of our data. Whoa, now we have an example using the CAS. And to make things a little bit easier for you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not actually gonna use my CAS. I've taken screenshots all the way through and we can talk about those. So here we go. This example has also been extracted from the Cambridge Further Maths Unit Stream 4 textbooks with permission. Thank you so much, Cambridge. And they've given me some data in terms of height in meters of a base jumper for the first 10 seconds of her jump. Base jumping, terrifying. So we've got time 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And we have heights, which are obviously decreasing. I'd be very surprised if she base jumped and went up. But uh, what do I know about anything? Part A says, construct a scatter plot displaying height, which is the response variable against time, which is the explanatory variable. And in many cases, the questions will tell you which the EV and RV is. If you're not sure what an uh, explanatory variable and a response variable is, head back to a previous video. Then it wants us to linearize the scatter plot and fit a least squares regression. So having put that data into my calculator with my titles of time and height, and you do not need me to show you how to do this, I got it to actually plot a, yeah, a scatter plot. And as we can see here, here is my scatter plot. Do I notice? Is my data linear? Nope, it's a very definite curve there that appears to be doing this. So then I look at my circle of transformations. And when I looked at my circle of transformations, it told me I could do a y squared or an x squared transform. Did the question tell me what to do? It said linearize it and find a least squares regression line. So because we are dealing with an x squared at this moment in time, I added a new title. I added a new list called time and SQ. Now SQ for squared. You can call this anything you like. Bananas, apples, uh, well maybe not bananas, there might be too many letters. But the point of it is, think of something sensible to call this. And I went time squared. You could have maybe put T, SQ. There's all sorts of things you could have called it. Now having put that in, I want my calculator to do the hard work for me because I want to be able to Yep, I want it to work out the square values for me. And so if you have the Casio class pad, this is the way to do it. If you're wearing, uh, if you're using the TI Inspire, sorry guys, videos for that will come at a later point. I used to love the TI Inspire, but the Casio class pad, as far as I'm concerned, is freaking awesome. So what you notice is I put my cursor in here, or I put my thing in there, and you'll notice it changes to Cal, and that's Cal equals there. And what I do is I type in time, with the carrot and the two. Now that's nothing more than calculator speak for square my values. An important point to note is that you have got to use the label you've used at the top there. So it's got to be time if you've put time. Sadly, uh, a number of my students would leave this as a value of x here, and then they would write time squared there. And your calculator is gonna throw an error because it's go, where is this x you speak of? So having done that, scrolling up to my next set of screams, you will notice that yes, indeed, it has now filled in all my time squared values. It's taken these values here 
and squared them, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Brilliant. Now we are going to draw this thing here. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is hit that button there. That's going to bring up our dialog box to say, well, okay, when I hit the draw or the graph screen, I want you to draw this. So first things first, I want a scatter plot. And I've decided on my x-axis, I want time squared. Yes, well, I didn't decide, the question said. So there is my time squared and my y value stay the same, which in this situation was height. Yep, so there we go. That becomes height, leave that as one, and that is square, and we are good to go. So that when you hit set, what happens? Well, it's a weird thing because I actually wanted it to draw this thing, but it didn't. It went, okay, I've remembered that. Thanks very much. So when we actually then click on the graph button, which is this one here, then what we should end up with is this set of data points here, which as you can see, is pretty linear. So we're like, okay, cool, that works for me. Now, having done that, what do I wanna do? Well, the whole point of this is to do a linear regression. I wanna come up with my line of best fit, all right, my least squares regression line. And as we know before, what do we do? We hit calculator, then regression, and then linear regression, color that in twice, and you get another screen. We are always, when we're doing a linear regression, making sure we don't make a silly mistake here again, all right? Our linear regression now has to have time squared along the bottom and height up the side. So there we go, our X list is time square, our main list is height, the rest of it you just leave, you hit OK, and ladies and gentlemen, up comes my information. Now, Point of note, as I point out in every video I do, make sure that comes out as A plus BX. No, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's just gonna make your life a lot, lot easier. So we can now write then that we get Y is equal to A plus BX. What is my Y value? As I say here, it's not Y, it's height is equal to A. Well, the value of A gives me 1559.9. 982. Uh, as we can see, the textbook actually rounds those values. Plus B, which is actually, now some people do plus minus 4.90, for example. Now, I really would not put the plus and the minus together. It's just going to confuse. So in this situation, I'm going to do minus 4.9 times and time. Yes? Nope. Because remember, our x axis is time square. So we must make sure that we write time squared. Now the brackets, as far as I'm concerned, are just there to make it look a little bit easier to read, but that is now our least squares regression line, and I can use this to interpolate and extrapolate data. Knowing that information, we can then interpolate and extrapolate our data. Now obviously we've got to be careful here because what we're trying to do is we've come up with an equation to help us guess our values, all right? So, but what does interpolate or extrapolate mean? Well, we know that we've got our values doing this. At the moment, our smallest value is this value here, and our highest value is this value here. Now, I've drawn the graph of my original data because that's what we're trying to find values for. We are doing our least squares regression line to help us create a formula to find the values for this graph. Not the straight line graph, this graph, although theoretically it will work. So, what I'm saying is any values that now fall between our time between this value here and this value here on my x-axis will give me a y value that we can predict, right? That we are fairly confident that we can predict. So for example, if I look for this value here, the chances are my equation will give me a value, roughly speaking, there. So when it falls between the lowest and the highest data out of items on our x-axis, we call that interpolation. Extrapolation, obviously, hopefully, is when we finding are being asked to find values that may fit outside of the minimum and maximum data we've been given there, right? So the questions will always say, you know, extrapolation, why is that wrong? Because we don't know what happens outside the rest of this graph, okay? We do not know what happens outside the rest. So we've built a model based on the data items they've given us. So the question probably went on and said, right, well, find the height when the time was 3.4 seconds. Well, they've given me time, they've given me a value, and I now have an equation here that says height equals 1560 minus 4.90 times time squared. Bang in my value of time. Don't forget to square it, which is what I've done here and out comes 1503.356, and so we can say our height 
is 1,503 meters to the nearest meter. There we go. This example showed how to use an x squared transformation, but the same process would apply to a y squared transformation. The only thing that's different in this situation, oh, let's put it actually into red for you, is that this will stay as x and this will now become y squared. And so my equation, if we were to use the same idea there, would have been height squared equals 1590 minus 4.90 in this situation times time. Notice that the squared would have moved to my y. All right, now as is want, I am starting to enjoy doing VCAR exam questions on this. And so VCAR exam questions on this concept, 2019, paper one. And I'm just trying to highlight that all of this is fair game for examiners. The table below shows two variables, x and y, and the associated scatter plot is also shown. What do we notice? It seems to be going up. It is not linear. The explanatory variable is x. The scatter plot is non-linear. A squared transform is applied to the variable x. Long way of saying, ladies and gentlemen, can you now do an x squared transform? what this lesson was all about. So the equation of the least squares line fitted to the linearized data is closest to. How are we going to be able to do this? Well, you actually have to put it into your calculator. And there we go. There is my calculator. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to x. And the next thing I'm going to change that to y because those are the variables they've given to me. And I also know that this is going to be an x squared. So I'm going to bring up my calculator, abc. And let's type x. And let's use my stylus x s q execute so that's all set up so what are we going to do now so let's go and put in my x values that they've given me so there we go there is my x value data in and i will now do my y data and there's my y value data in so what do we do now if you remember we're going to go down here and i'm going to say can you do me a favor please and i want that x squared i've made sure that my variable is named appropriately hit enter and if there was a problem it would come up and tell you and i have my x squared in so what am I going to do now? I'm going to go calc. I don't need to draw this regression, linear regression. List one, I want as x. Oops, list one, sorry, I want as x squared. List two, I want my y values to stay as they are. Click on OK. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. What do I have? My a value is minus 1.338915. So a is about minus 1.34. And b is 0 0.55 or 546. And so it would appear I've only got two choices here, A and B. And what did you notice? A has just an X, but B has X squared. And because we've done an X squared transform, I now know that the correct answer for that would have been B. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this particular lesson. I'm going to move on and I'm going to do one example in another video of a log transform and one of a reciprocal transform. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. Uh, if it has, do me a favor and comment below. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe? Uh, there are not many people watching this channel. Um, I hope that actually I'm engaging and the lessons are useful to you. And uh, the more people I can get watching this, uh, the better it is really. So thank you very much. Have a good evening or good day. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye.